Today we're making pine tree scatter terrain for your tabletop. Hi guys, what's up? I hope you're having an awesome day. My name is Leif and I want to welcome you to Devs and Dice. Today I want to show you a cool way to make these little beauties for your tabletop games, be it Dungeons and Dragons, Frostgrave or well, anything. The best of it is that it's super easy, it's fairly quick, and in an evening I'm going to show you the seven steps I took to knock out a dozen of uh, these. Now, this video isn't sponsored in any way by IKEA, but it might as well be. You'll see what I mean. As always, if you like what I do here, please consider liking, sharing, or subscribing. With that, let's get cracking. All right, so we're going to start by creating some bases. Now, I chose to use some 3mm MDF that I, well, scavenged from the back of a broken picture frame from IKEA. And as you can see, I opted to measure out an approximate sort of 2 times 2 inches bases using the measurements on my cutting mat. Once I have the measurements, I use a ruler to draw the lines and then I cut them using a hobby knife. The nice way of cutting uh, through this is to cut several uh, times until you are through. Now I did this the first time just to show you, but the rest I went uh, a little bit faster. I just scored them and snapped them apart. The downside is that the edges might be a little bit less polished, but that's fine. Trees can have somewhat more sort of organic shape to their bases. So eventually I ended up with 12 bases, which I started beveling uh, a little bit more to make the, the thickness less intrusive on the tabletop. Now, plenty of people uh, usually say that you shouldn't cut towards yourself, but for my sake, this is how I cut uh, and how I have the best control uh, of the blade. Uh, but yeah, people, uh, be careful. Once the edges are cut, I file them down to smoothen out the edges. And then, of course, we need to clean up our workspace. Alrighty, so this is what I use as armatures, the small fake Christmas tree from Ikea called Fakea. Uh, I bought mine a couple of years ago and they cost like $10 or so, and you will easily get, I would say, somewhere between 50 or 70 trees for one of these. Now just take a wire clipper and clip off a good amount of branches from the tree. Each branch varies in length and girth a bit, which we will use to our advantage. Now I want my trees to have some sort of variation, so I start with how I shape the needles on the trees. On some I might make them look a bit chaotic, on others I make them point sort of downwards in a 45 degree angle. And on some of the trees I actually pull out the needles or strands to get more of a trunk visible. Another version is to trim off the needles, leaving a couple of millimeters, making the trunk thicker in the next step. Speaking of the next step, step 3. Time to warm up that hot glue gun. I start out by gluing a healthy dab in the middle of the base, and then I attach the tree. Once the glue has cooled, uh, I use some hot glue to start sort of sculpting the trunk of the trees. I also tend to sort of swivel a, a root sort of coming out from the tree to the edge of the base. I find that this looks good, but it also helps to sort of secure the tree to the base. Now adding more hot glue might reheat the cool center, so pay attention and just take this in stages. 
Here's a clear example of uh, a tree with quite a lot of, well, um, exposed trunk. The important thing is to build up a natural shape at this point. So try to ignore how it looks and just care about the shape of the tree. The core of these trees are made from wire. So another tip is to uh, shape them a little bit to make the trees look more organic and less sort of perfect and Christmas tree. So in the interest of variation, I cut some more branches off and I decided to make some trees that are larger. And this is simply done by combining two of the branches. I start by hot gluing them together at the top. Once the glue has cooled, I shape the wire at the bottom of the tree. Now I made three of these and I knew that I had to use something else as a tree trunk. And I looked around and I, <laughs> I found an old wooden dowel. So I cut the wooden dowel into three parts by simply scoring it all around and then snapping it off. And then we'll clean the bottom part to make sure that it's nice and flat. I attached the dowel using a bead of hot glue and once it has cooled off, I start sculpting the trunk. Trying to make it seem sort of wider at the bottom. And once I was done with these three special trunks, I just added a whole lot of hot glue at the top portion of the trunk and, well, stuck it into the tree. A good idea here is to dry fit it first, uh, which I did off camera. And here we have all of the trees as they are at this moment. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we also have my contribution for a Sam Raimi-esque cinematography award. <laughs> All right, we are more than halfway done with these trees at this point. So we start with adding a bunch of tacky glue, white glue or PVA glue to the base and the trunk of a tree. I found that Eileen's tacky glue works best for me here on the sort of cooled off uh, hot glue. In order to spread the glue, I just use an old uh, hobby brush to sort of spread it out evenly all over the tree and the base. Now I'm going to flock the base and the trunk of the tree with some crushed coconut fiber. You can find these over at IKEA as well. I originally got this uh, idea from Squidmar. He uses it for uh, making forest bases. And in my opinion, it looks kind of nice as bark as well. And yeah, like you can see here, I did the same process on all of these trees. And this is what they will look like. And honestly, I would say that these already are looking quite nice, but we're not quite done yet. Alright, time for the fun part of this process. This step will transform the trees from something meh to something wow. I'm going to use two colors for my trees. The first one is uh, coarse turf in a light green shade. Now I'm going to use Eileen's Tacky Glue for this as well. I know you could use an aerosol spray glue and I honestly tried it and it smelled fiercely bad. So I'm sticking with white glue. I use a large brush and I just sort of try to get glue on all of the needles of a tree. And then you simply sprinkle on some flock. Be sure to rotate the tree and get flock in from every angle into every nook and cranny. Once you have good coverage, just tap the tree a couple of times and set aside to dry. Once I'm done with the flocking, I use the paper sheet and sort of scoop it back into the container. Well, most of it. Here I'm adding some glue to one of the darker pine trees. Uh, and on that note, I use Woodland Scenic's coarse turf conifer for a majority of the trees. The process is exactly the same as the previous trees.
All right, we are getting close to the end now. Um, so I would like to seal all of the flocking as soon as possible. Here I'm showing you, well, I, I hesitate to say it, my recipe, but the recipe I used. I just used some simple white glue. I put that into an old spray bottle and then I add a dash of flow improver and then finally a whole lot of water. Now you wanna shake this until it's sort of dissolved. And then you take your beautiful trees out and you just give them a good spray down of this mixture. This will sort of soak through everything and lock everything into place, uh, both the flock and the coconut fiber. Now acting quickly, we proceed to the final step, highlights. Now with the tree still damp after the spray, we're gonna add some highlights. For the darker trees, I used blended turf from Woodland Scenics. Now I sprinkle this from above to, it's gonna act almost like a xenophil highlighting. It really makes the trees pop a whole lot more and add depth to them as well. For the brighter trees, I went with some yellow grass fine turf from Woodland Scenics as the highlight. And I think it's time to have a look and see how they turned out. Now, I went outside on my balcony and I took some D&D minis of different sizes for scale. Crafting these trees took me about one or two evenings worth of work and it was fun. And I really love seeing my painted miniatures with some scatter terrain. It really sort of awoke the child in me and I just find it so damn inspiring to be honest. And I will have to continue doing some more scatter terrain pieces uh, going forwards. I suspect that there will be more of these videos in the near future. Alright folks, that was it. I hope that you liked the video and the result. Feel free to uh, post in the comment section down below if you have any thoughts, questions or comments. And as always, if you like what I do here, you know, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. And with that, I want to wish you an awesome day and stay safe out there. Until next time.